What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fab, my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through today's MLB slate. It's a big one. It's Friday. It's the last day I'll probably play, although I'll definitely be in Discord and pop in with my thoughts over the next couple of days. But this could be a week off for, for no DFS for me, which I'm going to, I would say I'm going to try and figure out what I have to do with my time, but I actually have a lot of stuff to take care of. So I'm excited, though. I'm excited to try and end this first half strong. It was not the greatest first half. I've, I'm up overall on the, on the MLB season, but a lot of, a lot of what could have been so far. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we turn one into a win tonight. This, this is the last slate, right? It's the last. Well, they're Sunday, Saturday and Sunday. Oh, there are. I thought. Oh, I thought we were, they were off Saturday and Sunday. No, they, they play. They play Saturday, Sunday. The game is Tuesday. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I believe that's what we got here, and then we're off until again. I believe Thursday or Friday. So, okay. Um, well, let's get into it because there's there's certainly a lot of options. Um, just want to point out again for people on smaller slates like yesterday, and it's not like it's always going to happen. It's just shocking to me the number of in the high in the highest limit buy-ins, the highest prize pools, how many tournaments are being won without full stacks. And yesterday it was a four one 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 um, that won it. I think the second place was like a three two two one. And I'm not saying that it's look. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. I'm just saying when you get into lesser games and you can pick out a couple of bats, literally you can win the tournament with this, the slate with a couple of bats. So being so stuck on, on, on who we're going to play. I just think it's, you know, I like to do that later in the season and very early in the season. Uh, this po point of the season, I, I kind of like the idea of on smaller slates, not fully stacking. Now this is a big slate, no problem with any five man stacks, but I don't think you should always, I just, I just personally don't subscribe to that. You should always, you always need to five man stack on every slate and that yada, yada, yada. Um, just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, Sheets, any overall thoughts on the slate before we jump into game game by game? Um, nothing overall. I mean, it seems like a nice nice little slate. I mean, I have like probably five pitchers that I'm kind of keying on, and then uh, maybe like five teams that I'm kind of keying on, and we'll see uh, see if they can blend together in some way. Yep, makes sense to me. All right, so let's uh, let's get into it with the first one. Uh, I'm not going to play Patrick Corbin. I just want to point out that he's been a little bit better. Uh, for whatever that's worth, you can obviously still gives up power, still gives up stolen bases. Atlanta is one of the top stacks in the day, which is the only reason why I mention it. And I think that I still have them as one of the top stacks of the day. But I did want to throw that out there. It's good hitting weather in uh, Washington today. And I think this is a spot where both offenses are mildly in play. I'm probably not going to not going to do the Washington thing, but I do. Uh, I, and I even I even think Ian Anderson makes sense as a long term, long shot tournament play. But for the most part, for me, it's just going to be the uh, Atlanta offense here. Yeah, currently at this at this early look, uh, I'm not really getting to either of the pitchers here. Um, and Atlanta, once again, is going to be probably the if not the top stack, at least one of them. Um, and they're going to be pretty popular as a result. Um and, you know, like I said, you know, when you're, when you're playing popular, popular stacks, you want to pair them with unpopular pitchers or be creative about your lineup builds uh, within those stacks. But Atlanta certainly rates to be, I get, I have five teams that I'm kind of keying on a kind of a mixture of upsides and values and stuff. And, and Atlanta's, you know, one of the chalkier ones that I'm looking at. And I'm not, I'm not really getting to either Corbin or Ian Anderson today. Yeah. I think there's a chance Atlanta ends up a little lower on than maybe some people think. Um, they're expensive. It's hard to get, it's hard to get like Riley Acuna and Swanson into a lineup. You know what I mean? I'll tell, um, I'll tell, I'll tell you, people who played the chalk are really, really happy right off the bat yesterday. They got an Acuna walk, stolen base and a Swanson home run. I know. To start off, to start off a game and then, then it all kind of, kind of stalled. Exactly. Like, like, like every game yesterday, basically, except for yeah. the White Sox who were the yeah. one stack I just had no interest in. And then yep. they win the slate, but, but they won the slate, but nobody played them. So it didn't matter anyway. Right. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so I think that the, the stack could be a little lower on just because of the pricing of some of these guys. It's it, you're going to have to fit in some of the cheapies and I'm just going to keep mentioning it. Like every day I see every lineup that whenever I have a bad day, but I, I, I make a couple Michael Harris lineups in my stack. Oh, yeah. It always gets there. You know what I mean? This guy just hits a home run. It feels like every time I play him. Um, so, you know, that's something else you could do differently. He's, I don't expect him to be overly owned, obviously at 4.2 batting nine. Um, RCA won't be owned. Uh, Azuna will, won't have crazy ownership if, if he's batting further down. I guess they probably move him up to like fifth today. I think Olsen will be low owned in the lefty lefty. So I actually think that there's ways to stack Atlanta 
uh, pretty cost effect effectively. And I think that they're a very good stack. And even if you're not stacking them, uh, Acuna especially, but all of these guys, the speed power, I mean, Swanson's expensive to look for speed power, I guess. But there is a tremendous upside against uh, Corbin just because he gives up so many bombs and it's really easy to run on him. So, I think yeah, he, he was what was that? We had him a couple of starts ago where uh, where he smashed. Um, he crushed he, it that, that game against uh, the Pittsburgh. It was an early game. Yeah, he had he had 12 K's in eight innings. Yeah, but I'm not uh, I'm not doing this. Yeah, I don't think I'm doing it either. I, I, but I, I, I'm not going to say that if I play a bunch of lineups today, which I might, because it's my last, you know, big day playing and everything like that. Right. Or maybe, maybe, maybe I do throw in a, a weird Corbin or a weird uh, Anderson lineup. I could see, I could see one of those paying off. There's enough strikeouts in the Atlanta lineup. It's just at the same time, it, they're probably going to score eight runs or more. <laughs> like the five, the five point three run total feels low to me. Actually, I, I would have thought that they were going to be closer to six today against Corbin. Um, all right. Uh, Evaldi and, and Montgomery and your Yankees, uh, sheets, what are you doing here? I'll let you start it off and, uh, yeah, tell me what you're I'm probably not doing anything here. Um, I, I really think that, as I say, both, both, uh, pitchers are just are good enough to keep the hitters out of my stacks and both hitting environment, both hitters are strong enough to keep these pitchers out of my lineup. So I'm probably going to pass on this game. Yeah. And it's also like the best foot forward thing, right? Like, it, you know, there's, it's one of those things where if it's seven, nothing Yankees or something in the, I don't know, sixth inning or fifth inning, let's say, I, I don't think that the Red Sox are going with their ultimate bottom level receive uh, quarter, uh, <laughs> quarterbacks, receivers, uh, pitcher, because I think this is like, you know, you have the rivalry thing and you just tend to see, you know, a little bit less output in, in these games, especially last, last uh, series before the regular season ends. And, and I just think it's, yeah, it's probably a stay away. I actually have a little bit of interest in the Yankees here. Um, Ivaldi will challenge you and it's enough, uh, you know, enough to, so to where I could actually maybe take some shots with a, a lower owned Yankee stack. And that's really my only argument for it. I don't think that it's, it's like some sort of, some sort of crazy spot for what it's worth. They've hit Ivaldi really well in pretty large samples. I mean, uh, he's only got a 20% strikeout rate against them. Uh, eight home runs and 200 at bats isn't like incredible, but it's solid. I mean, uh, Stanton has three home runs off of them. They're, they, just as a, as a lineup, they, they do, they do profile to be decent. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if I ended up with some, at least Yankee mini stacks. And those, those guys for me would probably be judge, um, the, 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 the you know, the normal guys, judge Rizzo and Stanton, but those guys are all really expensive. And do we want to do that against a decent pitcher on this late? Probably not. I'm a little surprised to see, I know Boston's down some bodies, but man, oh man, and 3.4 run total against Jordan Montgomery. Jordan Montgomery is now, I mean, Boston basically is locked in if they're playing at either at home or in uh, New York or Baltimore or anywhere like that. They're basically usually locked in to have like a four and a half run total all the time against anyone. So it was kind of surprising to me to see this low total today. And I'm just double checking if there's something I'm missing on the weather. Um, not really. No, there's, there's nothing more. here. Yeah, there's nothing here. All right. It's just, it does seem like a low total. I would bet the over on this game. I'll, I'll probably put that in my in my bets of the day. But uh, this, that, that's my immediate thought. Oh, betting the over, but not necessarily going to focus on either offense. All right. I think we come back to, to good chalk. I know that, you know, Toronto, when they let, oh, Toronto can never hit. They never do this. It happens with them. They're a, they're a, a, a boom bust type of offense in general. I am going to be high on Toronto today again uh, against Granky. You put a low strikeout pitcher against this team, and I don't know if he can induce enough weak contact to, to get by in this one. For what it's worth, he's been really solid lately for, for him. Still can't strike anybody out, still allowing a ton of hits. The one problem with stacking against Granky historically is he's not a guy who usually gets out of line with, with walking a ton of guys. So and you, you kind of want that, but you do have an extreme hitters umpire and Stu Sh Shewater. Um, at the same time, while I'm, while I'm making the case for that and, and using that as a reason to play vault, to, to, I'm sorry, to play Toronto. I'm also going to play Manoa. Manoa is one of my top pitchers on the slate. I don't think there's anything unusual about that. He's only got a five and a half K prop, which feels way too low for me. Um, I know he's not been the same strikeout guy as he's gotten really, really good in real life, but you still are facing a, and, and it's true that the, the Casey is a really good farm system. 
So these guys aren't all scrubs, but it, it's it's still a triple A, basically a triple A lineup, with the exception of Bobby Witt, who just just now is a, is a rookie. You know what I mean? Um, but I love Manoa and I like Toronto. I think that's a very natural guys to play together. What's what's the line in this game? Minus two fifty. I mean, what 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 is the? Yesterday was the biggest uh, since in all the in the history of the uh, what's it called uh, of baseball. They said it was it was a, a five plus five minus five fifty or whatever for Toronto. Um, but I think did Toronto end up losing that game? I didn't end up watching the very end of it. I didn't um, even see. They might have lost it, and then as a minus five fifty favorite, possibly. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a big line. It is. I'm just pulling it up. It's oh against KC, they lost three to one. What's that? They lost three to one to KC. They lost three to one, and that and that was the biggest favorite. I they I heard it was the biggest favorite they'd had since they started keeping track of it for regular season games, but I. I don't know if that's true. I don't remember ever seeing a minus 550 before. I don't think they were actually minus 550. They, there was there was there was odds on they were at least minus 500 because somebody bet it out live on one of the other shows. I I I would I would I'll, I would challenge that. Okay. I, All right. Well, that's, I what, that's, that's, what, that's what I heard anyway. Maybe uh, they bet maybe you. maybe they bet at minus 500 when there was a certain time of the game maybe they lied better or something. There's, well, it was because you know you know the reason right? Toronto has all their players out for COVID. I mean, I, I, oh, I didn't even realize. Oh, you mean Kansas City did? Kansas City has all their players out yeah. because they didn't get vaccinated, so they won't let them play in Toronto. Oh, I see. Oh, so that's okay. why. That's why it was such a huge edge. But I mean, again, we get it today, but we get an even better pitcher with. Well, I think a better pitcher with Manoa. Um, so I, I sort of like this. I also oh, think- he's gonna steamroll this, right? I mean, I, I, I have, I have Manoa um, as one of the, um, one of those one, two, three, four, one, one of the top four pitchers. I have them all rated pretty similarly, but I, I find it difficult to believe that Manoa is not the best option. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I agree that it, it, I mean, look, they have a two and a half run total for KC. You don't, see I mean, that's that. ridiculous. You know you what know, I mean? Like, like that Scherzer DeGrom stuff, you know, I, mean, I would definitely yeah. play him in cash. I mean, this is a, uh, yeah, he's nine K too. He's not like, he's like 11 K like it's yeah. it feels safe. I think that as a cash game play, he's probably a little safer, but you've got, you've got Woodruff and Kershaw coming up a little later that are both interesting as well. Um, but you, but you agree, right? Interested in Toronto. Yep. I have Toronto as um, again, there are five teams that I'm interested in, at least at this early juncture. And they are certainly one of them. I have them right alongside of, Colorado and, and Atlanta as my top three, and we'll get to Colorado later. But um, so uh, yeah, Toronto's certainly up there. Toronto's weird a little bit like the Dodgers though. When they when they have these great matchups, they end up just busting like yesterday, like a, a unbelievable matchup against the lefty who had never can get anybody out, and uh, and they can't get any runs. But then they play Zach Wheeler the day before, and they they put up like eight runs and in four innings off of them or something like that. You know what I mean? Right. The harder the matchup, the better they are. It's really really strange. Yep. Um, all right, let's talk about. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have uh, Vlad penciled in as here as as the obvious uh, first base starter, and then I'm gonna just do a couple things of my favorite individual plays as we go throughout this. Uh, you know, what? I'm not even sharing my screen. I, how how bad am I today, Sheets? This is this is a little the worst. Sloppy, a little it's sloppy here. It doesn't matter. It's all right. Here we go. So we'll we'll get into the next one. Um, but that's what I've got right now as the obvious uh, cash game plays. If you can start with your build with those two guys, I think that's what you're doing. Um, all right, let's talk about Detroit and Cleveland. Sheets, what are your thoughts on this one? Um, I think you're going to see, like, I don't know. I don't know if people are actually going to play Plezak, but as a, as a cheap option when we want to spend up for some bats. Well, they, 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 well, you know what? McKenzie t- took Detroit to the woodshed last night. Oh, boy, did he ever. <laughs> um, and I, I think that Plezak is a very uh, legitimate uh, spend down if, if you need to spend down. Um, uh, I I'm hoping to avoid having to do that. I think it's right. Um, yeah. but, but he certainly is the best of the spend downs, whatever that's worth. Um, and I actually do like, uh, the Cleveland side, um, as well, um, with, as far as the hitting goes, um, just as kind of a value option as opposed to some, you know, there are higher upside options, but, but I do, I do like the Cleveland side as well. So I like Cleveland. I'm probably going to end up getting to some police act just because, you know, but um, uh, in, in my hand belts, I'm probably not going to, I'm probably just going to play the, you know, the, the, the top, you know, the higher price guys. Yeah. Um, but um, please, I will definitely show up in some of the bills with like, with like all the Toronto spend ups, for example. Um, and uh, I do like Cleveland as a, as a value stack. As well. 
Yeah, the one thing about Cleveland, I think you're going to have three really popular guys, and I think they're going to be popular probably on both sides, but especially on DraftKings. In uh, Stephen Kwan, um, I think that Jose Ramirez will be, as always, and he's always a great play, very popular. Hang on, can you pause this for just a sec? Yeah, let me pause it real quick. Okay. Hello? Hey, I'm in the middle of recording. What's up? All right, we're back. So I was just, I just was talking about you're going to see a Quan Nolan Jones Ramirez, those three should be really popular, which should make this stack pretty popular. Yeah, but it's really going to be those three that are going to be the 15% or more guys. I really believe that. Um, and I, and I, there's nothing wrong with any of those guys. It's just, you know, it's a little bit of high ownership, uh, but but a full five man Cleveland stack, if you want to do it, there's a lot of other ways you can get a little different. I don't think Andres Jimenez will be as especially popular today. I don't think Fran Mil Reyes will be popular because of the other outfield options for Cleveland. And I don't think that Josh Naylor, who seems to hit a home run all the time, it will be popular and we know Ahmed Rosario will not be popular. So I think you can make a five man stack without, I just, I just think it's going to end up happening more than people think because everyone's going to plug those other three guys in because you get the, both the value and then you get probably the best DFS player from the first half of the season or one of the best. Um, it's pretty interesting because, you know, we've seen all the home runs just take a look, you know, Jose Ramirez and, and judge are basically almost the same this year in terms of their production, just because you get the stolen base element, 10.6 points per game, 10.3 per game. It's just a really, really strong play for Ramirez at 5,400. So they're always going to be popular as long as uh, they have cheap guys to go with them. All right, let's talk about Baltimore and Tampa Bay. This feels like a nothing for me. How about you, Sheets? It feels like it. And, and then I start looking a little bit. And I see Patino coming off of the he's, – he's off two months off of the last game where he got murdered, right? And then um, – but I mean, you know, what is he going to do? I mean, I don't know. Maybe uh, I, 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 I'm, I was thinking of going after the, the hitting in this game a little bit. Um, but but Tyler Wells isn't bad. Um, and then I was thinking of playing Ty, Tyler Wells. And then I'm like, yeah, why do I need to do that? So I, I originally thought it was a pass. Now I'm thinking about it again. And I'm agreeing with my original assessment that it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's I, I mean, I, I certainly could see an argument made. I actually like Tyler Wells. I think he's I think he's solid. And, and it's not like we should be afraid of this Tampa Bay lineup. And we always say that. And then you look up and there's four runs in the first three innings every time somehow. A little yeah. slap single here, a little whatever there. Um, one of the things I liked that I did last night was playing the Aranda Wells combination. Yeah. Very low owned. And Wells ended up, I think, with 16, 17 fantasy points. Just at, at when you have 2K and 2.1K and you can save that, you can build the rest of your lineup with the other guys you want. And you're getting low ownership on these guys as well. So I don't, I'm not going to advocate for, for, for fully stacking Tampa Bay, although it's really cheap to do, but maybe getting a two or three man with a Ronda walls. And then you play maybe a G man Choi or something like that, or a Harold Ramirez or an Arosa Reina to, to sort of round out a three man, sort of like a, a, a cheaper version of the Cleveland three man that I mentioned earlier. So I, I, do, I will put a Tampa Bay uh, three man just because of the ultimate value that they have. That's, that's what I've got. And it's at positions that when you get value at positions that no one else has value, that's, that's a really interesting spot, you know, 2.1 for a shortstop. If you can get 10 points out of them, that's pretty solid. All right. Uh, Texas and Seattle. Well, we have another good pitcher in this one sheets. What are we going to do with, uh, with our, with our boy, Robbie Ray? Well, first of all, props out to Seattle for, I think, 10 straight wins or something like that. Yeah. Seattle and Baltimore, by the way, we should give Baltimore credit with, with Baltimore's, you know what their, you know what their Baltimore salary is this year. They're spend they, it's 32 million. It would have been the fifth lowest of any team in baseball in the year 2000. There are many players in the major leagues making more money than their team makes combined. That's what I was going to ask if there was anybody actually making 32 million. Yeah, that's crazy. There are. Yeah, but so Seattle props to them. Um, and uh, Robbie Ray, same, you know, same, same as usual, right? He's, he's got incredible upside and, you know, he, he can, he doesn't always have to get there. Um, he's, he has a, he has a really, really good matchup. Um, Texas stinks. So um, he's going to be great, part of it. Worth. What's that? He's been great lately. Was Texas? Ray. No, no. Robbie Ray has been great. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm supporting. So, you. so he's, he's certainly in the, in that group of that top four. Um, and he's probably going to be, I, I, I have, I listen, I have to believe regardless of what these early ownerships say, I have to believe that Manoa has got to be the job, right? He just has to be. I don't know uh, because people look care about K, K props and stuff. And he's too full less than Robbie Ray is. 
Uh, you've got Kershaw, who's been really good, as well as uh, there's always Woodruff, right? Woodruff. So, but I, but I, but I think you're going to see like somewhere in the 25 to 35 percent on like all those guys. Yeah, that's what I, I, you know, that's what I figured. So yeah, he's he's certainly in the mix, and I'm going to play him, and you know, and uh, that's about it. I didn't really get to Seattle, but I, I can't imagine why you know you wouldn't want to play him. They keep winning, if that means anything. But I'm not really um, getting to Seattle as any as anything today, except for Ruffy Red. Yeah, I, I don't mind the, the Seattle play. You've got some 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 decent bats. I think Suarez for the power upside. Um, I, I, again, you're, you get, you're getting a, a long relief kind of a game. And we've seen Taylor Hearn be good, just good enough sometimes to get by. Um, looking through other bat, other bat. Oh, uh, you do have, you know, the cheap Santana who sort of found himself a little bit. Uh, Dylan Moore is another one of those cheap options you could use to fill out a stack. Ty France is in there. Julio Rodriguez, obviously the GOAT. Uh, as the, the most overused term in, in all of anything DFS or sports related, <laughs> but uh, Julio Rodriguez, the young A-Rod uh, with basically the exact same numbers at this point of his career that A-Rod had at this point. Um, I, yeah, I, I, could, I could get behind Seattle as a sneaky stack, but not my favorite. Okay. Um, all right. Let's talk about Chicago and Minnesota sheets. What do you, uh, what do you want to do with these guys? I don't want to do anything. Um, Are we sure? Although I would say that Kopech 7,600. Kind of interesting, right? <laughs> is kind of interesting. Um, Been off lately, but, but we know the talent's there. Aside from that, um, just not a lot in this game. And I'm not going to get to I'm, – I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'll end up playing please sack if I play any games. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind it a little I – don't, I don't mind a little bit of Kopech here. Um, I also don't mind these offenses. Partly, I think we have really good hitting weather here. Well – it's not like crazy good. It's wind, a little wind blowing in 82 miles an hour, which uh, 82 degrees, which it, it used to be in Minnesota. That's like an incredible day. But um, as we know, uh, the games are just warmer these days. So uh, don't mind if you want to do anything here. I, I, I'm sort of surprised that we're not thinking more about the White Sox, though. Um, I, I, it's not this. I, this is no, no chasing to me. This is a team that struggled against right handed pitching this year, but have a bunch of guys who just crush lefties in general. And you have a low strikeout lefty against the lineup with Robert, Abreu, Vaughn, Pollock, Tim Anderson. I think the White Sox might be something to do here, actually. So I, I might actually get to the White Sox um, as a secondary stack, uh, maybe even as a full stack. But I, I do like the White Sox as a – and they're going to be crazy low-owned. Um, I like that power, that Abreu, Robert, Anderson, Vaughn, Pollock – is a, is a, is a good little match for me. And then you could always decide to play Savala instead or, or angle instead. Savala keeps hitting home runs too. Um, I kind of like the white Sox here as a stack. I wish, I wish we had even like a little extra wind blowing out and they only have a 4.2 run total. I'm sort of surprised by that. I, I think I'm going to talk myself into some white Sox by the end of the day. Um, all right, let's put in some other, uh, some other things. It's funny. I don't have anybody else. I feel like I need to play outside of the first two guys I put on there in my, in my cash game type of build, but right. let's talk about Oakland and Houston, uh, Cole Irvin against this Houston team. I don't think that's the recipe for, Oh, is that what the next game you have? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think this game feels like or kitty is definitely viable. Actually. I think instead of the other guys we talked about, or kitty is probably a better play. Uh, than all of them. And I will take some shots on our kitty. Um, and I think, I think Houston is definitely interesting. Although, as I've pointed out in the past that I don't think Cole Irvin is bad as nearly as bad as people think, look at his numbers, actually. I mean, this guy for, forget the, the actual fantasy points. He's, he works his way deep into games. He doesn't give up a ton of runs. He gives up a little bit of power here and there. I don't think this is like a spot where you need to stack Houston, but if no one's going to, I might, I might be a, I don't know. I'm sort of flirting with this one. So Houston, I have is a big question mark for me. How about you? Yeah, I got to redo my stuff because I, I originally had Jake Odorizzi pitching for Houston. So I have to, um, I have to fix that because I do see her cootie pitching now. Yeah. Um, and I would have to imagine that, you know, that her cootie is going to be in play. Um, and now that I think about it, He's got to be. I, I maybe he is better than Plesac. I don't know. Um, this I team he's so. going against is terrible. <laughs> yep. um, and every once in a while, he does strike people out. He has a couple of good strikeout games mm -hmm. this year. So, uh, and and Houston as a pivot at home is always is always viable. You know. So uh, I agree with you that 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 Houston at, at low ownership is always something worth uh, worth considering. So I'm I'm, I'm perfectly with you. I like Urkuti and I like uh, Houston. 
Yeah, I'm actually, you know, in Houston, 4.7 run total. I, I like the lineup. They're, they're expensive at the top, but you can use, you know, you might be able to get Siri in there at minimum cost. Um, you might have Jake Myers as, at 2.7. Um, you can use Corey Lee as your catcher at 2.7. So there's there's enough value to make the, the top bats work. You're just going to have to sacrifice one of the top bats in order to do it. All right, uh, Hunter Green and Palante. Uh, the, you know the rule with, with Hunter Green uh, you can basically always play him and you can always make an argument to maybe take some shots against him. The guy has got electric stuff and he will walk people. He'll give up a ton of power. So I can see both sides of this argument. I'm probably leaning more on the stay away side of this game. It is 90 degrees with some wind blowing out to left. So I need to revisit the Cardinals a little bit. And I think the Cardinals are going to be fairly popular. Tommy Edmond is very cheap at 3.3 K, uh, just go one, two, three, four, and it's not even that expensive. Actually, one, two, three, four, five. Go get you get down to six with Tyler O'Neill. They're they're all cheap enough, man. So I, I can I can get there, and maybe Corey Dickerson sneaks into an early spot. So I actually think St. Louis is very much in play here. What about you? Yeah, you know what? Good 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 prospect on a on a crappy team coming off of 114 pitches. I I I, I don't think I don't think that I would I I would not be playing him here. Um, I, I, I would imagine that a hundred, that a hundred pitches is just not happening. Um, that I would hope, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Um, career high but, pitches. Uh, oh no, second career high. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, uh, I didn't quite get to the St. Louis, so that's interesting. I gotta, I gotta look at that again. Um, this game seemed to be more of a pass for me, but look in general, I totally agree with what you said. I got like Hunter green. I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna put up gems and he's going to get rocked. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't think anybody's going to play him today. Um, so maybe, maybe, maybe take a shot. Maybe you only need um, six, six innings or 90 pitches to get it to work at 7,500. Yeah. I mean, another one, another one that, that you might rather play than, than the other 7,500s or eight gauge or something like that. I don't, I don't mind this. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I am not getting to Cincinnati personally. I don't tend to play Cincinnati outside of Cincinnati, although it's oh. great hitting weather today. But and Palante is not, not anybody I'm afraid of, but I, I just don't think on a 50 on a big slate, I'm, I'm stacking Cincinnati on the road. How about, uh, Pal- how about Palante? 100 pitches, 96 pitches, 96 pitches. I know they've been letting him go a little bit. I mean, and there's not a whole lot of results to show for it, but no. he's been good enough to, to, to make me not want to take St. Louis as much in this one. OK, Sheets, uh, we got we got Marquis and uh, Quintana. I'm not I'm not and this is not me advocating for Marquis. Um, I, I will say that he has been a little bit better, but he's also had some road games lately. So, um, I, I I'm confused here. Cause I, 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 I'm wondering where the, how much chalk ends up on this game, because if, if, if it ends up here, I'm very happy to take a passing. I don't need to do this. There are some cheap bats that you might want to include. Like Vogelbach seems like at 3.4 in Colorado is really reasonable. Um, actually, basically all the pirates actually are, are, too, are too cheap. Uh, and I think that's going to make them really highly owned. So I'm probably going to be looking to try to pass on that. And I think on the Colorado side, they're going to be a little bit lower owned with the higher total against Quintana, but Quintana is good enough at limiting damage. So I, I'm very up in the air with this one right now. What do you, what do you think about this game? Yeah. I mean, as, as you might expect, I mean, Pittsburgh showing up as, 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 you know, probably the best point for dollar values on the slate, you know, being in Colorado and being cheap and all that. Um, question of, of how popular they're going to be. And I think they're going to have to be popular because if you're going to want to play those, those, those top pitchers, um, you're going to have to save somewhere, I guess. Um, or maybe not. I mean, Manoa is very, I mean, 9K is not a big deal. You know, like you could play 9K guys without having to play oh, yeah. cheap pit, cheap hitting. So maybe, maybe Pittsburgh's going to go, I don't say, un- obviously not only they're going to be popular, but maybe it's not going to be like San Diego style popular. I don't think. No. Um, so I mean, they do, they do look good to me. And, and like you said, Vogelbach is always, he's always, listen, he's always good for three home runs. You know what I mean? Like it's always, it's yeah. always in the cards, Cruz, Hayes, It'd be nice if Reynolds were back, you know, whatever, but he's not back yet. And I don't know if Diego Castillo gets any other, you know, Pittsburgh's not bad. I mean, they got some players. A um, little, little weaker without Brian Reynolds, but yes. I agree. Right. Right. And then, and, and uh, on the other side of the coin, I do, I, you know, like Colorado too. Um, you know, I think as, as all Coors games, it's going to project well. And just, you know, keep it, keep an eye on the ownership. I, I got this, I don't know, I have this feeling that it's, it's not going to be as owned as some of these other Coors games have been um, because you can, 
get to other hitting environments a little easier. I don't know. That, that that's my opinion. I do I do I do like both these teams though. And if they're chalk, I'll, I'll, I'm I'm kind of with you. I'm kind of more towards fading. But if if you're going to get a reasonable ownership, I think it's I think you should play them. Well, yeah, it's interesting because you've got Yoshi who should bat clean up today, and then you should have the number Vogelbach in second or third. And then you've got Van Meter who might lead off and they're all cross over the first base position. Van Meter is second base eligible also, but they, so they can't all be owned basically. Right. I do think that people are going to play a lot of Pittsburgh, at least to fill out, you know, lineups because they're yeah. just so cheap. Um, but uh, as far as fully stacking them, I don't know if I'm going to do that. I think I'm probably more on the filling in side of it uh, myself. So, yep. all right, uh, let's go to the Dodgers and angels, uh, the freeway series. Kershaw and Sandoval, uh, this probably is going to be a stay away game for me. Sandoval is actually like, as I always say about this guy, much better than he gets credit for. Um, the Dodgers, I don't believe have faced him. Uh, they might've faced him in, in one of the uh, preseason games, but um, I like Kershaw and uh, I don't really feel nervous about it. I think this is a not, this Angels lineup doesn't scare me that much without Trout. They have one of the lowest run totals on the slate. Kershaw with a six and a half K prop, which is above Manoa. Even I think this is interesting. And um, I, I'm, I'm not as I'm, I'm probably going to throw in one, you know, just because just in case Dodgers stack, I don't trust the angels bullpen, but I don't think that's going to be a priority for me. So I'm, I'm into Kershaw and mostly that's it for me in this one. Yeah. I think I have Kershaw below the other guys. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to get, I'm going to get to him. Um, and I'm certainly not getting to, pretty much anything else in this game. So uh, for me, Kershaw secondary um, play and then pretty much no hitting. All right. Um, for what it's worth, I believe only three times this season in all of his starts has he not had a strikeout per inning. He's been, he's back on the strikeout train when he does pitch. Maybe it's been four, but that's because he was gearing up when he was coming back from the injury. Um, I, I'm a little higher on Kershaw personally, but I, yep. I got you. Um, and here you have another one, <laughs> another guy we can use. Uh, yeah. I like you, Darvish, and yeah. I would like to get to some San Diego bats, but I don't think it's a full stack for me. How about you? Yep, I have Darvish as one of the four, um, and he's cheap. Uh, well, cheap Ooh, enough. Alone too. Cheap enough. I don't know about that. Um, I think people play him. I, I think they I think, can't play everybody. No, but I think that if you play Darvish and Manoa, for example, then then you could then you could play these hitter these hitters. I think. Yeah, but there's no difference between Darvish and Manoa and Kershaw and Manoa, and I think Kershaw is going to grade out better. That's what I, all I'm saying. Okay. Um, um, so yeah, so I like Darvish is one of my top four, and uh, I'm not quite getting to San Diego, but again, you know, uh, oh, the only reason I wouldn't play San Diego is 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 because I think San Diego doesn't have anybody. You know what I mean? Like, right, like, right. Like I certainly want to want to go against Bumgarner when I can, but San Diego, I mean, you, you, see, you see them struggling cores to get the, you know what I mean? Like they just don't have anybody right now. Right. I, I hear you. And, and, and for what it's worth, you know, as, as much as we keep looking at the advanced stats and wanting to get Bumgarner, most of the time he gets by without, as you say, he's got tricks and he's actually pitched well this season. So I mean, the fact is, I mean, these guys like Heichel and Gre and Granky and, 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 and Bumgarner and these guys are in the, are in the league for a long time. You know what I mean? Like, like mm -hmm. they, they don't they, they they're not in the league because they just get murdered every game. I mean, they get they get through the five innings most of the time, you know, and they they limit damage. You know, like they, these are not the guys that give up ten runs in the first inning. You know, they you give up they'll give up a very very grudging four in four or five innings, mm -hmm. and you'll be like, well, why did I why did I why did I stack the Pirates against them as chalk or something like that? Right, 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 right. Um... Yeah, I, I I hear you on that. Except for the Granky thing, I think is a little bit. I think who's the he, other guy? Does Le, like Lester? Does he still pitch? I don't think so. I mean, I, I, he's not. I don't know where he is right now, but he yeah. could be injured. But yeah, I hear what you're saying. Um, another decent pitching matchup at the end of the day. I am not going to play Alex Wood off of. I believe was that his ceiling performance of the season. It was against San Diego last time. Um, I love. I, I mean, look, Wood, Woodruff. It's it's hard not to say that Woodruff is, doesn't have a ton of upside. You know, he's been striking out everybody. He's been he looks back in form, and he hasn't even. I mean, this he's doing this all well while he was coming back from injury. He hasn't even gotten back to his normal 110 pitches yet. Um, it is San Francisco. Uh, we did see Corbin Burns shut them down last night. They're a pesky team. They're not a team I love taking pitchers against in general. But I do have Woodruff as one of my top player, my, one of my top six. Hey, I have a baseball question for you, actually. Throw it out. So, 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 if you manage a team, I, we're heading into the uh, 
to the all-star break here, right? So you have Woodruff pitching today, which is um, Friday. Yeah. Do, do they still put these guys on like a certain amount of days rest or is it like a rotation? You know what I mean? Like if Woodruff gets his normal, say, four or five days rest, or will they roll him right back out? Let's just say if it's the first game after the All-Star break or, they will give, or will they give the next guy in the rotation his turn? Well, he's not the ace of the staff. It's Burns anyway. So I think that Burns will well, like in start. general, you know what I mean? Like in, in, like in general, they'll, they'll usually just, you'll start the second half of the season with your number one starter every time. Oh, okay. So it's not like a rotation. It's just like if the, if the, the whoever the best guy is that's had enough rest, they'll just, they'll just go. With yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, okay. They'll try to get it back to that. Um, most teams anyway, I, I can't speak to everybody, but that's, that's sort of been the common way it's gone. No. Cause I was thinking of, you know, like if, if it's like how, teams might treat pitchers heading into the all-star break which by the way do are any of these guys on the all-star team um of which guys are you talking about the pitchers pitching today uh i have to go yeah, kershaw is um woodruff i don't believe made it this year uh, robbie ray may have i i have i i, I, I oh, is, is, is that is that is that is that something to no it's nothing to worry about. Okay. It means nothing because they, they don't pitch more than an inning if they pitch in the All-Star game at all, and nobody's going to save a guy for the All-Star game. They won't. Okay. Because I don't remember the NBA. Everybody's like, well, I'm going to rest so to be all psyched for the All-Star game. Okay, so yeah, no. Psyched. For pitchers especially, they're, they're going to throw one inning. Nobody's pitching more than maybe. Maybe somebody will pitch two in, in the in... – and, and no one's, like, getting pitch hit for to, – to prep for the – to rest. No. No, the opposite, I think, actually. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just guessing. Yeah. Um, all right. Friend, so, yeah. So, I like Woodruff as one of my top four. Um, and as far as Wood goes, um, yeah, I mean, he's another guy that, you know, if you want to pay down for, you can, but I'm honestly going to find the 300 for, for, for Darvish. Yeah. Um, if, if that's what it comes down to, especially off the ceiling performance. So it's probably, uh, probably a pass for me. Yeah. I have absolutely zero interest in Wood. Um, this is sort of my initial take at, at what you would sort of start your cash games like uh, sheets. What do you think about that in terms of cash game build? I think that makes a lot of sense and you still have plenty of money left to spend. If you could, you could look, so you could throw in your Darvish or I, you wouldn't be the cash one, probably play Kershaw there and you still have enough money left. You could play one more Pittsburgh guy if you want to. Uh, there's enough value out there where it could work. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's so funny. Like I, I'm not, I'm not getting to the Manoa um, Kershaw thing I, for me. Well, we'll see. We'll see how the ownership comes in. I'm, I'm expecting Darvish to be more popular than Kershaw. Um, what? How? In what world? Okay, that would be that's shocking. That's what I looked at. Just because he's, I don't know. Just because uh, I guess he's against Arizona at home. I don't know. That was that would be. Uh, but maybe not. Like you said, Kershaw. People always play Kershaw. I suppose is Trout still out for the Angels? Uh, Trout's still out, as far as we know. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe gone. you're right. Maybe you're right. Um, Kershaw's only only bad start this year really has come in Colorado. Um, so I, I I would think Kershaw would be the much more certainly for a cash game play than uh, okay. Than so we'll see. Or maybe maybe for the tournaments I can understand the the Darvish part of it. Um, but I but I get it. I think that they're both totally in play. I've got my priorities as Braves Toronto. I actually am going to get onto this White Sox thing because um, I think people are going to have a hard time spending for them, and I think they're going to end up really low owned. And then I will get into uh, filling in pieces with Colorado, Pittsburgh, secondary things, Tampa Bay mini stack with the, the two guys I mentioned, especially uh, I think Houston, St. Louis and Seattle are, are more on the outside looking in, but could easily end up making some of my lineups. Uh, yeah, I, I actually have, it's so funny. I'm looking at, at some odds here. Um, Toronto is a minus 340 against Kansas City. If you wanted a run line, they they're a minus. If you laid one and a half runs, you'd have to lay one fifty five. That seems that seems like that seems like free money to me. I, I don't know. It's it's a, um, I don't know. I, I, Manoa is like a really good pitcher, and Kansas City has nobody to hit against him. And Granky, you know what I mean, against the Toronto team, like like we talk about. I mean, I don't really bet baseball, and it seems like kind of weird to like lay that kind of wood, but. I don't know. Feel, feel, feels like, feels like 10 to nothing to me, but we'll, we'll just see, we'll see, we'll, we'll see yeah. what happens, I guess. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think it's interesting. Um, anytime in baseball, somebody's too big of a favorite. It's just, nobody can ever be five times really better than another team on a given day in baseball. Right. Right. Um, all right. Anyway, well, good luck to everyone tonight. I will be live at six. I'm guessing sheets is out tonight. Yes. 
And um, so I'll be live at six with you and we will hopefully have a big, uh, big success going into the uh, all-star break. Something to feel good about a little bankroll building and uh, making some money uh, before the all-star uh, break. A cu- couple of announcements uh, for those who don't know. So, so if you're playing MMA tomorrow, it is 11 a.m. Oh, wow. um, start. So make sure that you get in there. Um, second of all, uh, as far as uh, baseball projections for the remainder of the weekend, again, I'm, you know, bear with me. But you know what? If you if you're a Saber Sim Premium subscriber, then you'll you'll get access to their projections, which are which are good. And as we talked about, baseball projections are not as important as the other sports anyway. Yep. Um, so uh, I'll do my best to get everything up there. Um, if not, whatever. I'll uh, have a great weekend. And uh, and look, you know, even though we're all for baseball, money doesn't doesn't mean League of Legends takes a break. You know, <laughs> it doesn't mean that all the other stuff that I that I deal with takes a break. So I'll be I'll be around. Um, good. And uh, good luck. Yeah, good luck, everybody.